Hi, Lee Goodwin. My devotion today is taken from the Proverbs and it's about having a teachable spirit. I'm detecting that in our current society and generation, there is an increasing reluctance and resentment to the notion of being corrected. A parent, a teacher, an establishment figure, a leader that seeks to bring correction will probably be despised at worst or just tolerated and ignored at best. In Proverbs, it reminds us that God will bring correction into our lives. It says in Proverbs 3.12, For the Lord corrects those that he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. This verse does not justify the abuse and punishment of a child by a parent that is birthed out of frustration and unrestrained reactions. We need to be very clear about that. The biblical model is based around God loving us so much that he wants the very best for us. That's got to be the heart of understanding why God brings correction and why we bring correction and receive correction into our own lives. If God did not correct us, it would signify that he was being irresponsible and negligent towards us. He brings loving correction that demonstrates his passion that we will excel and be fulfilled in our potential. Please note the Proverbs we are focusing on does not say that God is like a human father who corrects a child whom he despises. God corrects us because he delights in us. And that's a very different perspective and picture that is presented. Perhaps you cannot naturally relate to a parent who has demonstrated delight in you. Perhaps you were subject to corrections that felt like to you there were constant put downs. Perhaps you felt that your parents' responses to you were ambivalent, leaving you with emotional insecurity because they never tangibly or explicitly expressed to you how you brought pleasure to their lives. God brings correction as a heavenly father because he wants to elevate you and he wants to express his sheer delight that you, yes, you are his child. Albert Einstein said this, commit yourself to lifelong learning. The most valuable asset you'll ever have is your mind and what you put into it. My personal aspiration for my own life is to be a lifelong learner. That's a mantra that I've tried to apply, not always successfully, but I try to live out that aspiration. Lee Goodwin, I want to be a lifelong learner. And if that is going to happen in any kind of realistic form, then I have got to have and maintain a teachable spirit. Even in those times when I don't feel very comfortable in what my experiences are seeking to produce in my character attitudes and responses. If I am to develop a teachable spirit towards God and towards those he um, transfers responsibility to for my overall development and well-being, I have to trust that the overlying motive is to bring out the best version of me and my Christ-likeness. And that is also true of you. In Proverbs 15, verses 31 and 32, it says, If you listen to constructive criticism, you will be at home among the wise. And if you reject discipline, you will only harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you will grow in understanding. Failure is not the presence of mistakes in our lives, but the unwillingness to correct our mistakes and learn from them. May God bless you with this devotion today. Amen. 